My next guest says this is what a soft landing looks like, and he expects the bull market to continue. He's finding opportunities in small caps in three sectors in particular. Let's ask Larry Adam about this. He's chief investment officer at Raymond James. Larry, as we ponder what to do with the Russells, because look, floating higher interest rates were very, very bad for them for three years. And if rates are, are on the up again, does that give you some concern? I know they're not showing much concern about that today. Well, I think it's important to look at which rates are we looking at, right? So when it comes to small cap stocks, they get about 56% of their financing from the short end of the curve versus only about 26% for large cap companies. So as the Fed continues to lower interest rates, that will, by definition, help small cap financing. And I think that's one of the catalysts that we think will unlock the value within the small cap space. So just sort of what, say that one more time. And explain to me where you don't want exposure then in this kind of new information that we have and where you think you'd still be pretty safe. So back to the to the financing, right? So 53 percent of the of the financing by a small cap company is done through floating rate debt. Right. So as the Fed is cutting those short term rates, they benefit as rates go lower. Off of, are, as far as the areas are they, that we continue. Are they pricing? So is it usually prime? Is prime similar to the Fed funds rate, meaning it's the, the shortest almost overnight area of the curve? Or is it more on the twos or the fives or something, you know, like that? No, it's no, usually within the one year time horizon. So prime is probably a pretty good example of that. And you've already seen the Fed cut once. We think the Fed cuts two more times this year and another four times next year. I think the other reason why I like small caps, though, is the fact that we do think, as you mentioned, we're going to have a soft landing. And historically, when the Fed starts to cut, you see that small caps outperform large caps in that one year following the first rate cut. But if there is a soft landing, you do tend to see small caps outperform even more. And we're getting more and more confident as the data comes out that we are going to have that soft landing. In your, so your favorite sectors in general, technology, healthcare, and industrials, are those your favorite sectors in the small cap world as well? Both. Okay. And I think the reason for that is that when you look at technology, for example, you continue to see fantastic earnings. In fact, if you look at the large cap space, there's only one sector since John, July 1st that's seen upward revisions. It's been technology. And with the cash flow that they continue to generate, what are they doing with that? They're doing buybacks, they're increasing their dividends, and they're investing for the future. And as your last guest were just talking about, productivity continues to be a big theme in this market. How are you getting that? By investing in technology. So we continue to be pretty optimistic on the technology space. Let me quote Jim Cramer from this network two hours ago who tweeted, crazy that tech can't maintain its gains. Really incredible how poor the semis trade. Yeah, so I think that there's just a consolidation right now. Remember, we start earnings season next week, technology two weeks after that. I think once again, when you start to see their earnings, and that's one area that consistently beats on their earnings, but when they come out with their guidance, and you saw some of that guidance yesterday, that it continues to be very strong for the demand of their products. So I think that this is turning out to be a good buying opportunity. And when I look at the fundamentals of what we're expecting from a top line, a bottom line, margins continue to be the healthiest in the tech space. Hmm. I think that's going to continue to lift that sector longer term. All right. So people who are selling, you're buying that sector today. The Nasdaq, by the way, is also up eight tenths. It's not exactly in the red right now. Just quickly, I mean, we, we didn't call it out explicitly. We've talked a lot about it. But you think one of the important drivers of this continued better than expected growth is government fiscal stimulus. Is there a comeuppance at some point? So right now, I mean, it's important to recognize that if you look at all of the bills that have been passed, whether it's the CHIPS Act, the American Recovery Act, the Inflation Reduction Act, of all the money that's been allocated to spend, only 20 percent of that has actually been spent so far. So that leaves 80 percent still in the pipeline to be spent. And I think that's going to continue to support the economy, which will ultimately support earnings as well. I know. It looks good for now. I just worry, again, about at some point, does it make higher rates on the margin? Is it borrowing from future growth and prosperity? Are we going to have to, you know, pay for it and make cuts and experience fiscal austerity as a result, you know, in, in a couple of more months or years' time? Well, I think in the near term, it's important to remember that that money's already been set aside. So it's there to be spent. So I think that continues to be a tailwind. True. One point I would put out there, though, is next week we do start to celebrate the second year anniversary of this bull market. And with valuations where they are, I would caution people that the third year of a bull market does tend to have a little bit more muted performance. Interesting. So I would be a little bit more cautious going forward. It's like the third leg of a relay. <laughs> or that third lap <laughs> exactly. on a mile, it's always the worst.